Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, Farm Rival Extreme here. Here we're looking at all the new monsters dropped today on the 26th of September 2024. And oh boy, we've got some banger selection of mods. We've got a finally at the store now. We've got a John Deere Tay Hander. Something we've been waiting on for years to have in that, on console at least. Also, we've got an interesting forestry grabber. Along with that, a new selection of small equipment by Massey Ferguson. More to look at. As always, time starts to be down below. But without further ado, let's get cracking on with our new mods for today. Starting off simply, we've got the old brake weld. This is by Cookson. 9.84 megabits to download. 8 slots on console. And what this is, is simply a Water fill point costs 1000 to buy, day maintenance of 1 buck. And yeah, you'll find this under build mode, under containers. And go towards the end. So there we go, 1000 to buy. And yeah, let's go and have first of all, see how quickly you can fill this up in that. So it's a bit more different looking compared to your normal water fill point. So I've got our container here and it's not filling up very fast at all. 1,000, yeah, this is a bit of a slow fill up. At least I'm looking into like, the large scales of how you can fill these things up in that. But overall, it does the job well. And it is free water as well. No cost or anything like that. And what I'm going to do a sec is turn off the interactive markers. Because, yeah, I just want to have a little look at this, so... It's basically like a mini doghouse in a way, you know, kind of mini house, mini doghouse, mini barbecue. It's got the meter in that, it's got your tap, got your inspection there so you can inspect your water source in that. So the overall, nice little neat mod in that. At the end of the day, it does what it does, and this will be very home on like an East European map, like an old German Bavaria map, so maybe something like that, so I'd be well more suited. But anyway, so that is the old brick well by Cookson next. Now for the restored house, this is by Janu. 12.53 megabytes to download. Slot count is 24, goes down to 1 or 2, we'll have a look. And what it is, is a simple house. And yeah, so your sleeping point is going to be just here. And if I turn my interactive markers back on. Do we have a wardrobe? No, we don't. But at the end of the day, as I mentioned in my mod review from the other day, wardrobe functionality is not really needed, personally. But anyway, so this costs 4000 to buy. And yeah, so it's a house that has been restored. Satellite dish in that. Keep the torch on. Go bins, decent guy rent. But yeah, I can tell this has been very recently painted in that. So this is very neat and very tidy in that. Got some of the little rubbish bits in that. You know, little containers in that. Wood in that store and burn in the winter. And yeah, there is... Yeah, no, I was just checking there's nothing... No interactive or triggers in that. But yeah, you know you got a little push point there as a decorative item at the front. And yep, onto the porch. Got a nice little lawn chair in that, some moving boxes. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's a nice decorative piece, does the job in that. And yeah, you find this under farmhouses, go towards the end. As I mentioned, 40,000 to buy. 24 slots goes down to 1 doesn't give any information on the mod hub for any deduction fees but I'm sure there's going to be some form of deduction fees but anyways that is the resort house by Janu next now for a behemoth we've got the old disused red brick factory this is by JM Gaming 23.25 megabits to download slot count is 16 goes down to 1 and essentially what is this it's a shed in that so Open the door there. And yeah, this is a very old factory net. Something like this I have seen here in the UK. Um, like the old uh, military base as well. I used to do army cadets going to, uh, what's it, Carewent. Many like, factories like these and that. Where like, maybe you think like, during war it was used in that. For either like, building munitions or whatever. And then nowadays it's used for both military training. As well as, you know, army cadet stuff and that. But, uh, yeah, a little weird backstory in that. Got a function clock at the front, I think. Actually, it's not a functional clock. Time is 9.38 in game. And that's reading 22 or just like 80 minutes to 1. So, yeah, not quite working in that. 
But, as you all may know, if you're very familiar with my mod views and that, I do love brick and mortar buildings and that. I don't know what it is, that kind of rustic vibe. And I can see as we're just going across, you like, got these like wear patches and that with the wood, not the wood, but with the brick and that. And yeah, so the doors, as you see, they open twice, they can open one or both. Plenty of space to store equipment. And also you've got a gate here, so you can open this up. I think that's meant to be the front. This is, well, I'm not sure exactly, but I think that was more the front, but who knows. But yeah, also you can sort of see, you've got turn on the shed lights. So you've got little pod lights above and that. But anyway, so this is a shed, so you find it under build mode. Under sheds, and as I may have mentioned, it is 50 grand to buy, day maintenance of 1, slot count is 16, goes down to 1, and it is 40 by 25 metres, so 40 metres going across and 25 metres going out. So yeah, it is a pretty large shed in that. It has a very unique set in that, again, something like this can be seen on a UK map. I can see this being perfect in like the countryside here in the UK and that. As well as maybe in states and that, you know, like the like old like Detroit and that, like the car factories and that. Many uses, many areas where this could be placed and that. But anyways, that is the old disused red brick factory by JM Game. Next. Now for the wooden buildings pack, this is by Bar T, 30.98 megawatts download. And this is a pack of wooden buildings and got a shed. And then the same sort of shed model almost, but it's been converted into a chicken coop. So the shed itself is 20 slots, goes down to 1. And the chicken coop is 31, it goes down to 2. I think we also have a little look. So starting off with, let's have a little look at the shed. I open the help menu and that. So, oh, look how it opens that. Not too bad, not too bad. Loving the old rustic this bit. Oh yeah, can't remove any like, partitions or anything. But yeah, plenty of space, you know, sort of small bit of bales, equipment, small equipment and that. Simple motor setups and that. And you got another door there to go in. And if you move across, we've got the chicken coop. So this will hold 60 chickens. Feed input is literally just here, so back out of the trader, and then jobs is a good one. So, if we open this, oh, mind the door. So, yeah, very similar to the shed, just with a bit less space around the sides. But, so, yeah, in here, got a nice little recreation room in that, so, got a little kitchen, a little hob in that. I wonder, is there like a seat trigger in here? Uh, well, seat trigger for the chickens, maybe, but not for us. That'd be nice now, you know, to have like a farmhouse with a chicken coop built inside. But anyway, so you find this first one build mode under sheds, go towards the end. So 8,000 for the shed itself. 20 slots goes down to 1, day maintenance of 10. And for the chicken coop, obviously you'll find it under animals, under chickens. Go towards the end, and yeah, 3 1 slots goes down to 2. Cost 15 grand. Day maintenance of also 10 bucks, so not too bad. But yeah, dollar box is also here. No, all the like, custom stuff you can do with it, obviously, that wears a wood texture and that. But again, I gotta say, with a lot of these buildings we have in lately, that, like the, the weather effect in that. Like the detail in the wooden that it's not universal, it's not uniform. There's actually little pivots and little dimps and here and there, so overall a good quality of modern that. But anyways, that is the wooden bones pack by Barty. Next. Now for the Deco House. This is by Bernie SCS. 8.6 MW download. And what this is is in the name, it's a Purely a decorative house, 16 slots on console. And as you can see, can't enter, it's just all painted on. 
decorations and that. So you'll find this under build mode. Under decorations, go to others and then towards the end, got your house. So yeah, 55 grand. 16 slots goes down to one. No custom colors or anything like that. But I've got to say, as just a decorative one, not too bad. So alright, do apologize for the interruption. This has ruined everything because I just had the fucking game crash and I did not save a lot of things and yep, didn't save a lot of my notes, so yeah, pay my interruption and that's why it's mod reviews. Now I'm gonna come out late and plans. Well, normal based on recent mod reviews, but I was on this quite early today, but anyways, what caused the game crash? Simply open this, so yeah, it's working now because I've yeah I've tested a couple of times and that. Yeah, I was like I was like approaching the last clip and that. Like what's well, meant here and then yeah. Open. I may have accidentally clipped the door and that and that just caused the game to crash, so I don't know, so it could be a mod thing or it could be a selection of things because of course I got a bunch of mods and that I'm doing a mod review now, plus a couple of mods and that that I used for Set of things up and that, so it could be a variety of things. But anyways, this is the Deco House by Bernie SCS. So overall, you know, at the end of the day, it does what it does. It is a nice decorative piece, like the grass lawn on the ground. You've got the concrete for your driveway and that. So overall, it does a solid good job. We've got a little back garden area with the willy bins and that. But anyways, yeah, that is the Deco House by Bernie SCS. Next, moving on from that disaster game crash, Nat, we got a next couple of mods is part of the PGR sort of kind of series, and that this is by the Odeo, and we're starting off with the PGR buildings by the Odeo. This is 22.49 megabytes to download, and this is a small pack of agricultural farm PGR located in Lasniki in Poland. And yeah, so this contains a garage slash workshop a gate, a gate with a sign, and a way station like decorative building without the way station area. So overall in terms with slot cam, so let's get my notes up for this. So, so starting off, we got the deco building that is eight slots. And the gate without the sign is seven slots. The gate with the sign is two slots. So there we go, yeah just correct things here. So yeah the decorative building here that is eight slots. The garage and workshop that is nine slots. Forgot to place that down after replacing pretty much everything almost. So let's have a little look. So we're looking at the workshop. Obviously, you got the hazard marked area over here. And also, this is at like a shed as well. You can use sword pallets, bells, equipment, whatever you can think of. And I do like the, the wooden doors now. They can actually, can actually see through them, I think. And yeah, sorry, my cat there just distracted me there. But anyway, so yeah, trigger mark is just here. Beautiful, nice little buildings and that. Again, I do like these old Polish buildings and that, so where you find all of this and that, so go under buildings. So yeah, you also do have a shed in that. And that is six lots goes down to one. Again, I do apologize, this section here has been disastrous. But yeah, that is 10 grand to buy. And also here you'll find your workshop. As I mentioned, 19 slots goes down to 1. And then go across to your decorations. On the fences, go towards the end. And we can see, so yeah, you've got your PGR gate. So this is the gate without the sign. 7 slots. And then, yeah, with the sign, both of them 1 grand each. And for your decorated building, go under to others. And yeah, so it's like a way station building, but not a way station. I'm not sure how I got that from that, because we've got the way station we're going to be looking at next. That's a separate entity in that, but overall, again, I do like the look of it. Also, yes, the gates are functional net. There we go, and again, I do apologise as well if you hear dog, bark dog barking in the background. That is my new dog. It's a I uh, was dog is it's a French bull mastiff and that and that's like two floors downstairs and that so do apologize if you hear that barking in the background. 
But anyways, this mod review is going well so far. Overall, decent mod, decent mod pack and that. Again, may not be for me. I may not use this and that. But again, I can see the use of this because at the end of the day, Polish maps again like Polish players and that. Farm and that do have a very strong FS community in Poland and that. And again, I've seen my views and that, my analytics and that. A lot of people are from Poland that watch my videos and that. Weirdly. Again, a little sidetrack there. Need to get my mental faculties installed because we're very going into the mod review and we got tons of to look at, including equipment and that. But anyway, so that is the PGR Buildings by Leo Leo. Next. A quick fag or if you're American, cigarettes break after a disaster game crash out with the Deco House. We are looking at the Wayne Station PGR. This is also by Leo Leo, and if you didn't see the last segment, the PGR is basically a area of the agricultural farm state's PGR located in Nasniki in Poland. So yeah, this is part of the series here, and so yeah, we've got a way station here, 12.82 megabits to download, 20,000 to buy, day maintenance of 20, and the way station is 20 slots on console, goes down to 1. And yeah, you find this under tools towards the end. So yeah, no again color options or anything like that. So yeah, I think let's go to Yeah, let's hop into our terror track here because I want to actually test to see if the weight function is useful in that because it's so good to have like a weight bridge and then for it to be broken, not be function all that. And apologize that was hiccup I just had there, so past the other PGR buildings we just looked at, so on to the way bridge. Yeah, this is a weighing station, so want to be fair enough, make sure this is actually on. There's no ex external display, so it's not very modern. However, if you open the door. Nope, that's our electric meter net. You mind the door net. And actually, that is pretty nice. Wow, actually. You can actually weigh it. Like, it's like proper old fashioned weight. So, based on that, that is 16.7 tons. So, if we have a look at our tractor net. It weighs, yep, 16.7 tons, so that is bang on. So yeah, I'll just drive off sex. So it's basically like a, like a counter, not a counter lever weighing system and that, but if you go into here, okay, yep, weight is zero. Calibrate the weight in that to make sure you know the weight is all calibrating that. But yeah, the, that weight calibration thing, you can see there pressing circle. I think that is just a decorative thing in that, rather than anything else, so... See, yeah, I want to test it. Go back on. Does that calibrate itself? Thinking that's 16.7 tons again. 16 point, yeah. You on and off. Okay, you are not even perfectly parked on. Yep, that's still saying 16.7 tons, so I like the CRT TV display, that is also very nice. Oh, yeah, also forget, yeah, you also got lights with this, so light switch is just over here. And that is so much better for a mod review than that. Why did I not use that? But yeah, overall, actually, I like that. Shut the doors and that. So yeah, again, for a little simple building that. Also, you got external lights and that. So this is a way better way station than I anticipated. Because, I, yeah, I saw this, I thought, all right, not much description has been given by the modern that. So I thought, fuck it, place it down and then sort of do it on the women that. But... Actually, no, this is actually very nice. Again, it may not be the best of modern style in that, but this is a mod I recommend in that because it's a very fun and useful. 
Okay, the gimmick and that may be useful, what, a couple of times before you get bored of it? But something like this, this is fucking nice. So, thank you, Leo Leo, and yeah, this is the Away Station PGR by Leo Leo. Next. Now for the PGR Animal Builds Pack, this is also by Leo Leo, the last in his series of mods. This is 139.34 megabytes to download because this contains six animal pens, two pigs, or sorry, two animals of each type, so two cows, two pigs, and two sheep, but no chickens. And also, let's quickly get rid of that because I was using that to quickly set one of these back up because I had all these up ready to go before realizing these are all exactly the same. We've got one large and one small one, so. Large ones will hold 100 animals, and small ones will hold 20. And this doesn't matter if it's cows, pigs, or sheep. So yeah, we'll have a little look. Also, this does contain a very effective mural heap. No, sorry, not mural heap. I'm sorry, you heap that. And also says with this mod, it, its animals' buildings are being adapted for the manure system modification. Also, if you're on PC, as well as using the manure system. The enhanced animal system is recommended for the correct display of animals. But yeah, since I'm on console, we're going to look at it from a console perspective and still it is a decent pack in that. So let's look at the cow ones. Actually, no. Let's go to the sheep because I've got this all set up with feed and that. And it's exactly the same as the others. The only difference is in slot counts ever so slightly in that. So. But yeah, let's go over slot counts first, so I think it's the best way to go over this. So, for the cows, which is the difference between the lot. So, for the large cow shed, it is 33 slots on console, goes down to 2. For the small one, it is 20, goes down to 2. For the pigs and sheep, so yeah, 150 grand and 80 grand respectively. For the pigs and that, slot count is... 32 slots for the large ones and 39 slots for these smaller ones. And the price is 120 and 70 grand respectively. Yeah, 120 grand and then wait a minute. That must be a typo, because what about the cows a sec? No, no, no that's got 150, 180 grand. But if you go to sheep and that, 12 grand for a hundred a <laughs> hundred sheep. Even though the smaller one is 70 grand, so I think that's meant to be 120 grand for the sheep in that, but there uh, must be a typo in that, so quickly grab this what you can, because 12 grand for a sheep pen is quite large in that, I will admit, for 100 sheep. There are better ones available on Mod Hub now, in my opinion, but we're looking at from the review of what we've got here today, so overall, go into the small one. So yeah, you got doors on each end. Your feed and straw for the cows and sheep goes, oh sorry, cows and pigs goes in here. For the sheep, it's just uh, normal hay in that. Normal hay or grass you'll put in. But yeah, I like the very rusticness of this, so. Also, yeah, every door is openable in that. Got a little stairwell in that. That will lead you to the loft in that. So, not with this one, but I think with the large ones you got a external ladder in that. And yep, small door in that to open up, so you can have a... Maybe a conveyor system in that, to load bells into here. I'm not sure how effective that would be in that, but who knows, so... Yep, got another little shed, shed door there. And yep, just have a little quick look around. And yeah, let's go back downstairs in that. And then, yeah, so that's the small one. Going to the large one, so as I mentioned, you got a stairs going up. Also, I've had issues. Again, I know I've had issues with this map now, and I was going to do a brand new test map today, but on the way home from work now, I know it is. A bunch of mods dropping, and I was like, bloody hell, another day I'm not doing the new map and that. But these landscaping, like, land. Land terraformations. This wasn't because of me or the test map now, Mon. This was purely by the animal pens and that, so it's going to need an update in that. Unfortunately, I hope it doesn't create the 12 grand for 100 sheep in that. Please keep that, Leo Leo. 
but overall, apart from the terraformation, that's the only issue I've encountered with this mob pack in it. But yeah, very similar to the one we just looked at, the small one, but just with a lot more windows in that, larger air store pallets in that, or bells in that, more likely bells and pallets in that, to be fair. So we're going to hop down. So yeah, we got doors on either side in that, but these large ones here, so if I shut that up on the side, this is going to be your main entrance for your vehicles in that. And if you go along, you can't really see it here that, but there is a pit here. A pit that goes all the way along, and this area here is where you're going to put your feet and straw that into. But yeah, also you got access doors on the sides as I mentioned. But overall, I do like the look of this and that. This is actually looking very good. Also, we do have a light, so I think that's on one of these ends, maybe on the other end. So yeah, I think the lights must come like automatically at night or something, because have a look around the outside. You got this little like junction box. Definitely not modern like Western standards and that. That's for sure in that. Definitely an older Polish style in that. But yeah, looked around and there is no light switches in that. Also, as you come out of here, you do have your, a little gate in that, so... Yeah, it does clip with the animals in that. But yeah, he uses, again, if you do have a small enough equipment, you can drive through the sides in that. But that's only for like a small tractor and a very small trailer. Large equipment, you won't be able to get through that, because I use our class 960. And it was clipping above this. And yeah, this little area over here. So this arch area here, this has got no collisions and that. So you can drive a decent sized medium tractor. I use like the John Deere 47s, whatever it was. And yeah, that had no issues going in. Had some issues with the tipper trailer and that, obviously unknown then. So again, a bit of a word of warning. But yeah, that's for the large ones. Small ones weren't an issue, Nat. But yeah, so quickly to round this off, I'm going to show the little pit I was on about. So yeah, over here, got a little pit, Nat. Obviously, we do have Sean here. But besides from that, there is nothing else. But yeah, again, I do like that. And then lastly, we've got a toilet. So. We go over here. We've got a toilet, and I'd say this is a very effective toilet. That because this is a liquid mineral silo, and this is 12,000 by. It says on the mod hub page 12,000 to buy. And yeah, also trying to quickly look on the mod on that sheep sheep folding that 120,000 supposed to be. So got your fill point and export that for your liquid manure. And if you go into here, it does look like a toilet with three sinks. Why in the hell would you have one toilet bowl and three sinks? If anything else, it should be the other way around. It should be three toilets and one sink, or a toilet here, a toilet, say, here now, and then a sink on the end or something. But yeah, not bloody three sinks to a toilet. Bloody hell. Shut the door. But anyway, so you find this under, go towards the end, and yep, you will see silos and that. There we go, PG on that, and this is what I mentioned about, because 12,000 to buy, this is a, essentially what is this, it's a Surrey tank, and it holds 450,000 litres and that. And again, if you compare that to base game and that, so this holds just more than that, so... Within that one span, so within a normal, typical, large manure heap in that, you can fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten at least, a bit more space you can fit eleven or twelve of these into one large area in that, so that does look a bit crazy that, doesn't it? Especially with all those sinks now, there's what, 33 sinks and, <laughs> yeah, oh, can't get out of here. 
let's quickly get that removed. But yeah, three three sinks, two three toilets. No, sorry, or wherever toilets have ten toilets. House is on about. But anyways, again, I am losing the plot today, and we've even got to the equipment pieces yet. But anyways, this was the PGR Animals Borrows Pack by Leo Leo. Overall, good quality mod and that. Got everything you need, including a sheep, a cheap sheep pen that will be fixed in an update, unfortunately. And a very effective toilet, but it's got, again, three sinks to one toilet. Why? <laughs> but anyways, let's head on to our next mod. Now for the industrial soil build, this is by GMNG Joy. This is 29.27 megabytes to download. And what this is, it's a little small pack where we got two sawmills and two sawmill cell points. So we'll get to the cell point in a bit because this is worth having alone. But yeah, so we got the industrial sawmill productions. These are exactly the same. The two the only difference is the styling. So First one here on the left, we got a more used working one. And if you go across, we got a bit of a more rustic vibe. So, but yeah, in terms of what they use now, what they produce, so wood goes in. And if we have a look, see we make planks, wood beams, long planks, and yeah, we've got wood chips as a byproduct, as you expect. As well as a ability to transport said wood. So I brought that one on the bottom, that was one I could place on extra to get some trees transported over. So yeah, we've got too many pallets to spawn in because these spawn a lot of pallets because I thought, yeah, decent pallet size area, so let's get this all cranking up. However, the capacity is what? 3, 6, 12, 18, 24, 36. 42 pallets in total for one production net. And in terms of throughputs and that, so if we go into here, so wood goes in that, and all of it processes at 200 cycles per month. So 100 litres in for the long plank, or sorry, for the planks, it is a 10% reduction to 96% loss for the wood beams and 7% for the long plank. So Overall, pretty decent in that, and actually, yeah, for throughput and that, and the ratios and that, that is very good. Capacities is 250,000 litres for your input, roughly. I'll say about 225 to 250, I'll say 250, which makes more sense. And for your item output capacity, this is 20,000 litres. Or for the woods, again, I think it's about 250,000 litres you can have. So, yeah, you're gonna have to fill that up. Unless you go absolute crazy and do a massive, I don't know, like a huge part of the map login in one go. But anyway, so first of all, at the productions themselves, these are free slots on console, goes down to one. So yeah, 10 grand to buy, doesn't matter which one you go with, it's just a different rustic type. So yeah, industrial sawmill, rusted sawmill. Also, you get cell points, so I get two. And these are very similar, so you got the newer one and the more rustic one. These are one saw each, so moving on to the sell point. This is worth it because we have a look at our prices, so if I stand back, go to our sell point, so if I want to say tag set production. So yeah, these are the sell points, so we sell the wood here, and they offer a more premium price compared to the farm shop, which is on the map, as well as the sell every container by Schultz mod. And that's my usual yardstick I go with when it comes to sell points, because Schultz's sell point is a fixed rate based on the game itself, with only a minor deviation, whilst like, your normal shops and that can have a potential large deviation in terms of its actual price. But yeah, that's wood chips and that. If we go on to the wood. So yeah, usually around that time it'd be about three grand. But yeah, that's the average, three grand. However, we're getting over 25%. I think about 27% improvement in sell price, so that's actually very good. So 
That alone, to sell points in that, is worth it, so... So you go under productions and sell points. How much are they? Five grand, so yeah, ten grand for the production, five grand for the sell point. And I want to know as well, what about your planks and that? So planks is the same as well. Furniture and that? Nope. No, we wouldn't look at that. That's something else entirely. Doesn't do AMD premium items. But yeah, long planks. <laughs> that is very nice indeed. You can make a lot of profit from that. And yeah, so since it's part of the normal pallet snap, I do have the little pallet mod enabled, so no take a pallet saver and just go boom. That is going in, and we've just made £10,000. But yes, yeah, so in terms of your production input, all you have to do is go into this hazard mark error here, and that's so easy enough. Mine's not hit hitting all the pallets and that. So yeah, we'll go over to this icon here, press L3, and boom, wood is in. So that's how it works. So overall, a very good quality mod and something that I highly recommend in that. Even if just the sell points alone, but the production themselves is actually worth it. So this is the Industrial Sawmill by GMNG Joy. Next. Finally, moving on to our equipment and vehicles. First of all, we've got the Lizard TPS. This is by Hydraulic, 2.13 megabit stamp load. And what this is, it's a homemade war trader. First of ten pounds to buy. Got custom configurations for rims, frame color, as well as tires. Slot count is four, goes down to a one. And yeah, you find this under tools, under animals, go towards the end. And there you go, you can see there's a TPS, holds a thousand litres, weighs 712 kilograms. What you can fill with is water, milk, liquid fertilizer, and herbicide. So yep, yeah, in the configuration we've got lizard standard tires, continental standard ones, two and three. And then back to lizard. Then chassis in that, so we've got a custom black, and then your basic base game colour palette, so that was gonna change the frame. And then I'm going to go with my usual hot pink, and that's going to be for your rims. So yeah, overall, not too bad, not too shabby. You can see, we filled it up very quickly with water and that, so there's no point doing the test because it's a thousand year capacity. But if you want something cheap, small and efficient, a cheap IBC pallet of water that can be transported and moved around the farm. So this is actually very good if you've got a very small farm and with little to no money. But anyways, that is the Lizard TPS by Hydraulic. Next. Now it's time for the Lizard SF40. This is by Doys Fold, 7.05 megabytes download. And what this is, it's a trailer that can be configured into bell trailer, bell loaders, like almost kind of way, or just a normal trailer itself. So slot count is six, goes down to one. And yeah, before we go into further look into it close up, You'll find this under store, under trailers, so first of all we've got 4,000 litre capacity and that is wood or metal frame and then also you've got a bell trailer, exposed trailer, this is one I prefer but also do you have one that is very similar to that one without that little tarpaulin bit but yeah, if you've got a bell trailer I do recommend this one because that gives you a bit of way then to have bells overhanging that right, no or yes at the rear at the front, there's a little light there as well. Main colour is all the old rustic colour, so the main colour is going to change the main frame. And that's how it looks like with the actual trailer itself. And then that's you got the rim, so let's go with a nice silver. That does that. I can see I've got some seats and I've got a bell one here, so this is the bell trailer net. And yeah, let's go and have a little look because. Yeah, let's look at the screenshots now on the mod hub and that, especially with this one over here, I'll show you that the sights could open. But yeah, as far as I can see, there is no way to fold sights in that. So I'll go back to the trailer. So L1, nothing. L1, R1, nothing. R1, nothing. So I'm not sure you can open the sights in that. And as we move on here to the seeds now, this is very peculiar because 
Have a little quick look around. No real clear way of, you know, how it's going to empty now. So press L1 or 1. Offload. Nothing's tipping out. It sort of goes from like, the bottom to the sides of that. So, like, comes through the bottom of that. But yeah, like, no tipping option or anything like that, I'm afraid. So that was also what I was looking forward to. But yeah, T is a very slow unloading rate, so it's not the fastest of trades, but at the end of the day, it holds 4,000 litres, so it's not like you're doing, what, a million litres at a time? Only 4,000, so overall, once again, for that old rustic kind of vibe in that, I, think I dig in that. Like with the wire we just looked at last, and the brick building over there. All perfect combinations in that, but anyways, that is the Lizard SF. 4T by Deutsche Vault. Next. And it is time to feel very monorific because, as you can see, we've got the Lizard Monobike. So, this is a unibike but a motorcycle. So, it's a monobike. This is by Farm Central Soul, War Karma, Coster, and Romulus. 5.53 megabytes of download. Four slots on console goes down to one after purchasing. So, First of all, you'll find this under vehicles, under miscellaneous, because it is a mirror bike. 22 grand, 300 horsepower, manual transmission, 4 litres of fuel, top speed of 49 miles an hour. So yeah, you got your main colour, got a huge selection there, so... Let's go with a nice hot pink, so that's going to change the tank, the screen, the be bezelment for the lights, mud garden that, and the general frame that as well, as well as I think that's the... Ignition or distributor by size of the engine is changing in the middle. And then, yeah, got rim colours, or sorry, secondary colours, so that's going to be the edge of the rim, the bead in a way. But anyway, so first impressions, not too bad. And this is something I can have a lot of fun with. And also, unlike your typical mirror bikes, and that this won't you know, go tipping over, so. Around top speed, 49 miles an hour. And you're going left to right. Not a problem, not too shabby. Yeah, definitely performs well. Stops decently enough. So yeah, let's show it off the cab, so off and go, just press the accelerator. And then I'm not let touch anything. And yeah, just a casual tip. I'm sure you can tip this over onto its side in that, so if that's the case then. That'll be interesting getting up in that. This should look a weird glitch for the player in that, jumping into it. But anyways, that is a cracking little mod. But yeah, again, there's no trailers or anything, so a 300 horsepower. Man, this is a Frankenstein motorcycle if I've ever seen one before. Of which I have, so... At least a, like a one-wheel motorcycle in a way. At least you're on the outside of the wheel, rather than on the inside, like a certain South Park episode, or episodes, once you include the old references and that, so, oh yeah, that got very dirty very quick and that, so ignore that, if you know it, you know it, if you don't, then don't worry about it. But anyways, that is the uh, Lizard Monobike by Farm Central Soul, Rokama Caster, and Remunus, a mod that I highly recommend, that's not because I'm biased, because I'm a South Park fan, and or a motorcycle enthusiast. Next. Now on to something I've been waiting for for ages. This is the John Deere 3400 pack. This is by Black Sheep Modding. 21.23 megabytes downloads. And what is this? It's a John Deere 3400 Tay Hander. A 2003 model. 10 slots on console. Goes down to 1. But along with that, we've got some unique stuff. So we've got a grabber. Nothing new there. We've got a pallet fork. Again, nothing new. A leveler with the option of guys, yes or no. Along with that, we got a three point leakage adapter for the head on that. And then lastly, we got a cutter adapter. And this one specifically, as you can see, is for the 1100X9 combine. So we'll have a look at that in a sec. So this is something I've been waiting on for ages and that because, like, for so long now, we've had all different tight handers, but nothing like a John Deere and that. So it flies on the tank handers, 95 grand so, compared to its rival, so 7.9 7 tons, 24 miles an hour, 145 horsepower, 
yeah, I, it's better than the Scorpion than that, so that is very good to see. And then, yes, the adapters can be found under Tender Tools. Go towards the end. And yeah, these are all two slots each, goes down to one, so Pat Fork, the only thing you got is color configurations. And same with the leveler. But yeah, you can option for guides, yes or no. And the adapter, same thing, had different color configurations. And then now see the color support. So it says, yeah, Nova 330, top liner. But yeah, so it's pretty much adapt for any kind of combine that. But a lot of these can be used inter interchangeably in that. So you can maybe get away with some bit finagling that. And you reverse bucket, two and a half thousand liters for grapple, yes or no. And yep, yeah, same with design color. And for the 10 hundred itself, the configurations are as following. So we'll rent, we got Trobor standard, white, back standard, mission white, continental white, or sorry, standard, mitre standard and white, BKT standard, brush lines white, no keys communal, and back to Trailborg. Protective grid, no or yes, so that's going to be for the main cab, so if you're doing a bit of logging, that will only protect the front window, nothing at the rear. And the windows, got clear or tinted windows. Beacons, no or yes, up to diff eight different types, so that's type 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, I shall do it. I sort like the bulb. Three, two, one, and then none. So you can have a very similar model or something a bit more in your face. Warren triangle, no or yes. So it's going to be at the rear. I'm pretty sure there is nothing out front. Nope. And then attacher's got no trailer or three points. So this is at the back. So this is nice. So for a while now, it was only like the Murdo one that had the option for a three point hydraulic. So you got your standard um, pin hook there. Then also you got your trade joint, so that has all the different ball joints for the traders. And then a three point linkage that does have a ball hitch there, as you can see. So this is something nice, and guess what? Doesn't cost any more than that. So color, so you got John Deere green, yellow, Forest green and black. Room colors, yellow or black. And that is it. So, first of all, hop into the John Deere. And that is rather nice. Horn. Simple enough, nothing too crazy about that. So, R1. Right stick up and down does that. And to get all the usual controls. We have press L1 and up. That will open and close the door. Beacon. Lights. Left indicator. Right indicator. And also, yeah, we've got R1. Right on or down on the D pad. Got an option for and different configurations to animate for the windows and doors. Ah, right, see so yeah. it. So do that. L1 and L1 on the D-pad, that's that. That's actually rather nice, so... Have a look as well, we've got toggle for steering, so R1 and L3. Got all-wheel steering, front-wheel steering. Crab steering left, crab steering right, and back to all-wheel steering. So I think first of all we'll go with the three point linkage. So apologies for any interruptions. So yeah, some basic capacities for this. So it says the lifting capacity is three tons. Maximum lifting height is seven meters. So yeah, this can be adjusted with weights and that. So I actually want to find out what's the limit on this. So if we go to our weight, so Thinking a first of all a John Deere 1800. 
that should be no problems. And then, yeah, we'll go to our Lizard Lightweight. So this is one I use all the time, pretty much. So I'm going to go with... It says three tons, so... Let's say three tons. Two and a half tons. So yeah, I want to see actually in a sec, so... If I turn this baby around... First of all, do you hook that? So this is... How much? Three tons? How does this affect the steering on that? So... Actually, overall, not too bad yet. It does feel a bit light, so you can get away with at least three tons in weight, so... That is good. But now, so go back to our weights. So yeah, let's go with... Three and a half tons, so three thousand five hundred kilograms. So once again, it is there. So, because yes, what's been there is because yeah, it says standard for says three ton lift capacity. With three and a half tons, you can get away with a fair bit in that. So, and actually, also, how much does some of these implements weigh? So. These weighs 750 kilograms, one ton, and the other at 225 kilograms, so that will actually help balance it out. So, got three and a half tons, put the adapter on. Yeah, it feels a bit more better, a bit more level, so I'm going to drop that because we've got a 3.8 inch device here. So, this is a cultivator, 1.6 tons. So yeah, you can use this end to you know, transport your equipment. But yeah, see that boom extension? Not the most I've seen, but you can pretty much get crazy with this, and yeah, can easily tip it if you want to, so get some like, smooth, fine controls will be fine. Because actually, I want to try to test the limit on this, so so alright, we got a massive plow. This weighs like five and a half tons. And can we lift this remotely without any weights in that? And you know what? We can. If I just slowly send the boom out. So yeah, it says lifting all that three tons and that. I think it <coughs> really depends on what you do in that, so. Yeah, three tons is perhaps. Okay, let's be a bit careful on that. So, yeah, three tons, I think it's just like a guideline to see if we're in the midst, but here in Farm Sim World, we don't do things by safety in that. We go the extreme. Or at least I do in that, so. That is all nice in that, so. Let's go and return those. Now what I want to get is a header to have a look and test the header now, so, or the header adapter. So, X9 Harvester header. Uh, there we go, something like that. So now, go over here. But yeah, I'm going to test every individual implement. Ooh. Fine enough, actually if you put that weight on backwards, it lifts up now. Do a fault. Just had the option and just... So there we go. We got the cutter support now. So this can be used to move and transfer your headers and that and things like pump onto racks and that. So yeah, on its own, not a problem. And then yeah, you can move your headers. Let's say if this was a rack over here. There you go. And then boom out. And drop it. There we go. There we go, his header. So, overall, not too bad, not too shabby. I think next, let's go and test the pallet fork. And that's so. Pallet fork, pallets. Let's go and grab a. Something that is a bit more chunky than that, maybe. Actually, I do have an idea. Um, where is it to? Which one is it? 
I don't think I've got installed in that, so well, that's a bit of a bugger in that, so fair enough. And uh, what heck, let's just do tree saplings. There we go, so then have a look at the planet fork, so bring all that in. And R1, right stick, left to right, does that, so. Ooh, it's like, doesn't move quickly, but really stick in that, so. That's actually quite nice, so. If anything else, that's a bit more better in terms of fine controls and that, so. There we go. I'm not good with pilot fork stuff, so. Just so you folks know, so. There we go. See, your thoughts aren't too bad. Get a bit of a user error that is. Come on. Alright, fine, fine, let's just boot you out of the way. There we go, that's better now. Oh. See, the pilot well, one does work in that. Again, it's all more down to user and that, so fair enough. And then, oh, I've just got the hard leveler in that, so. Can we grab our lever, please? Game? Come on, game. Be nice. There we go. So, how that actually works, I think you need. Yes, first of all, I'm trying to attach it normally. But no, I think you need the pallet fork in that, so. There we go, if we do that. Then if we head on over and I think this is how you hook it up. I'm not too sure. Again, I'm trying to sort of guess that. Yep, there we go. So it automatically So let's say I've got that a bit too white. Brings it down lovely jubbly. And yeah, just having a look. So and actually that can shift from side to side, so R1, right stick, left to right does that. And yeah, so not too bad, so let's go and test the functionality of this lifter. So I've got a little bump silo over here, filled up with some chaff and that, so ignore all the mess that. Oh, uh, the perks off, we'll set up more reviews than that, but... See, so yeah, there we go, we've got a pit. It is 1% compacted, 187,000 litres, so... How does this go? Again, I'm not sure... What of this compact is done by the actual John Deere... ...Tayhander itself, or what is done by the leveller in that, I think. Round and more than compacting, I think it's, it's just, you just in the name. It is leveling that silage, so. Or the chaff and that, so. There we go, you can sort of hear it going, so. It is compacting it. We have what 187,000 litres. So, yeah, it's just like deleting. Wait a minute, where's all that gone to? Because, yeah, we had. Again, so again, this could be user error in that, so. Okay, yeah, if we have what we've got. 167,000 years, and it's just slowly like, destroying it, so maybe not use this. I think it's just more of a clear terrain, maybe, in that. Again, I'm looking at the what well, says farm bay in that, so. Alright, no. Wait a minute. Okay, on the mod hub it says it's a broom in that. Car support, universe bracket, that. 
Yeah, so it levels off, so rather than an actual being like a leveler as such, this clears up any loose crap you've got on the farm, so... Fair enough. How was this handle our massive pile over here and that, so... You got like 2.7 mil net. So yes, yeah, it's gonna take some time for it to work in that, but as you see, it is just devouring everything you can see here. And eventually we'll clear away. So overall, not too bad a bit of a kit. I just got a bit misleaded. Again, on my end more than anything else by the Yeah of the mod description of it and now lastly let's go for the bucket so with or without the fork gravel also you know so R1 right stick left to right does that and that is pretty much it then yeah tip and pivot the uh, header and that not the header the head so but yeah you can use the grapple now as always to do a bit of login if you got the patience for it which I do not we're going to do a bit of logging already, so... Um, yeah, nine more, please, so... The bucket can be filled with pretty much anything, that. So, yeah, lime, please. Yep, yeah, no issues whatsoever in terms of weight weights. So, if I close that, does it stop, stop from tipping out? Yes, it does, so... That's actually nice, for once, actually, a grapple is sort of semi doing its job. Of course there are bits that would have gone through the middle and sides there, but overall not too bad, not too shabby. That I rather like. And how does this perform at picking said items up? So actually you know what? Very good. A little bit of it we was pushing along towards the end there, but you know what overall I am happy with that. Actually you do enjoy that then. Uh, for example, you know, you could say sell it. There we go, made what, a thousand pounds? A thousand dollars? So, yeah, overall, not too bad, a bit of a kit. So, overall, say this pack, definitely recommending that. So, that is the John Deere 3400 pack by Black Sheep Modding. Next. Now for the MF Industrial Utility Tractors, or the Massey Ferguson Industrial Utility Tractors, this is by Peter J. It is 41.02 megabytes of download, and what we've got here is a selection of Massey Ferguson Tractors and Ferguson Tractors, along with some implements and a tray or so, like the four pack we had the other day in that. This is a nice little neat pack, but actually with this pack, everything's actually working in that, so... First of all, we'll have a little look at the tractors and that, so you'll find the tractors on the small tractors because these are very low horsepower tractors, good for a small farm and that, so go from left to right, we've got the MF-35 Industrial, that is 8 slots on console, goes down to 1, then we've got the MF-203-5-40, that is 8 slots, goes down to 1, then the MF-2135-20, that is 7 slots, goes down to 1, and also the MF Industrial 20 BDF. Now it's also 7 slots goes down to 1. So yeah, starting off with the 35 Industrial. This is a little Fergie tractor and that. So, the FE35, they got the normal MF35, 35 x and back to the FE35. So, 37 to 45 horsepower. Tires got a lizard brand, so industrial or grass and tires. And then got Nukin Roads, Continental Agricultural, and then back to Zizzard. Optionals on this, we've got Standard, Industrial Fenders, Standard, Front Bumper, no or yes. Rops, no or yes, so that is the Rollover Protection System. I guess that's what REPS, or yeah, Rollover Roof Over Protection System. Toolbox, yes or no, so that's going to be on side there. And then exhaust you've got horizontal or vertical. Attacher, you've got the swing and draw bar, a pickup hitch, and back to the swing and draw bar. Front of the attachers, no, or lizards. 
because yeah, we've got two different loaders. One is a MF1 or Massive Ferguson one, and the other one is a Lizard Brand. So look at that in a bit. Moving on to 203-5 and 2203. Different engine sizes again, from 45 to 46 horsepower. Just really not much difference. Depends on what your personal preference is. And also changes like to look on the tractor and that changes like different models, I think it is. And for the tires, it's got industrial, industrial weight, so pretty much the same as we had before, but just with or without the weights. With the Continentals, we've got the agricultural tires, rear twins, rear tires, back to agricultural, Midas, industrial, weights, weights, and that. And also, yeah, got BKTs. That is a nice to see. Then version's got standard design one, so that's the fenders. Rear mirror, yes or no. So no, left or right. Actually, where is that rear mirror in that? So uh, no idea, but anyway, so yeah, exhaust vertical or horizontal. And then yeah. The toe in, so you got the swing draw bar, a gooseneck, so this is important for the trader and that, so and then also you got the tone holding front of the attachers, no orders is one once again. Moving on to two one three five, got US spec or the EU spec. Twenty US spec or the twenty EU spec. Twenty volt power. So yeah, it's all forty five horsepower. Again, just different engine moles and that. And also it depends on which we're going for. So the EU one will have the front leader option. Some of the US's won't. Actually, sorry, the exhaust system, not the front loader and that. So tires. Yeah, it pretty much the exact same we just seen. Versions, so you, this one you got the cab, the road over protection system, or back to standard. Optional, so you got front guard, front guard frame, front weight, so that is 216 kilograms. Exhaust, horizontal or vertical, front leader attachers, no, or the lizard one. And side cutter, that is the exhaust system. And that is it. And that's tractor we got is the MF Industrial 20 B B D F or BDF. So 20 B Ds and F got the military specs. So again, all similar engine sizes and that. Again, just different models, different variants and that. So I do like the military spec and that. So we'll go with the standard one because this will give us some of the optional add ons. There we go, yeah, something like that will do. Tires, exactly the same. Version, it's got the canopy or the roller protection system. Exhaust, you know. And also, yeah, got a linkage draw bar on that, so you can have different positions on the link bars. Hydraulic spools, no, or sorry, standard, or two spools double action. That is actually quite nice. Front of your attachment, oh, attachment, this is the one that comes with the Massey Ferguson one. And I think that is it. So yeah, no colour options or anything. And then also yeah, we've got a train at, and this is two slots on console, go down to one. And you can see it's the dumper, 75. You will need like the goose stick option potentially, if you want to go with that attacher, or just an old attacher. Depends on what you want, so... Yeah, really it's just the tyres and the particular attachment you wish. Wheel brown colours, black, yellow or red. And uh, yeah, moving on lastly to our front loader. This doesn't have any attachments or anything, but trust me, there is plenty of attachments on mod hub in that, so just double checking. Nope. So yeah, both of these are two slots, goes down to one, pretty much exactly the same just for the models and that so for the this is one we've got the standard or option for a pallet i guess that means it has better like in terms of pivoting than that not too sure and the colors is yellow or gray and then yeah on to the massive ferguson one 
Very similar, not just different in decals. And yeah, you got different colours if you want to go with to match the military spec one or so. We're in the 20 BNX, so front loader. I do have the pallet one, but it does seem to work well. Horn. Lights. Indicators. And how does this perform? So, yeah, get up to go. Not too bad, not too shabby. I do like all the details that in the cabinets. That is rather nice indeed. So, we'll probably up over here in that. And then moving on to the 2003, we've got the goose egg attacher for this. So, we've got 7,000 litres of stone, or 7,500. And that is the heaviest as you can get. So, it can do it just fine, but yeah, out of push. And unload the, the uh, tipper net. Love you, Jubbly. So, attach you, then you finish that off. So, yeah, no other options or anything like that. So, this will how you attach the goose neck of that. So, go vaguely close enough, and then the game will help you out a lot. And then, yeah, we just tap across to the 35. Again, all these do perform very similar, so I ain't gonna go over these in too much detail now. But yeah, overall, good quality mod now, so yeah, pulls well, decent steering in that. I'm not gonna do the hill climb, especially the one with all that stones loaded up. But yeah, then yeah, just simple controls for the pallet and that stuff. I'm not part of the front loader in that. I'm doing L1, right stick, left to right. And I can't see nothing changing. So yeah, L1, right stick, left to right. Yeah, up and down does that. I guess I'm it to pivot the end of it. So, honestly, you know what? I don't know. Overall, good quality mod that, nice little pack of mods in that, so again, this is something I want to use on my series now, that's you know, a little large, uh, I want to try to say a yard tractor, but it's only 45 days until FS25 comes out, so who knows. And now, nah, I'm trying to be a bit cheeky with the lifting, but no, you can't quite do that, unless you've got like, a pad for connect. But anyways, that is the MF Industrial Utilities Tractors by Peter J. Next. Moving on to our penultimate mod for the day, we've got the John Deere x Series. This is by Deans. 20.21 megabytes to download, and yeah, we got plenty of x combines on the mod hub in that. However, if you don't know Deans, he does amazing work, does all John Deere and that he's done so far, he's for console zone. So he has done mods for the John Deere 7R, 8R at 9R series and yeah this is his first little divot into the combine section so as you expect there are a lot of interactive you know animations and that. And it does say prepare for interactive controller or prepare for interactive controller. Also prepare for a passenger script that does require the Kubota DLC and also prepare camera system requires the camera system. Guessing that and the interactive controls is the mod or something, I'm not too sure. But yeah, we've got three different versions, so EU, US and Brazilian. But yeah, so I've got the EU and US spec here in that. And uh, yeah, sort of quickly double checking that. So if I go to my mods X9, yeah, only two combos pop up in that. But anyways, these are three or four slots on console, and you find these as you expect under harvesters and the prices of that are exactly the same you know again difference in weight and that maybe engine specs and that or terms with the models and that or whatever but overall it's actually too bad 639 so yeah same engine size 
Yeah, just again, just looking at the configurations, I think yeah, it's same transmission, same everything, just besides from the weight. So yeah, three or four slots goes down to two, so we'll go over one because it's going to be pretty much exactly the same, so you spec, so green tank got standard, so standard that is 40,800 litres, the extension goes up to 16.2, the big extension goes to 19.4, and then back to standard. And I think with the US one, it's a tarp version, so 14.8, 14.8 with the tarp. And then standard extensions, big extensions. And then back to static. Yeah, moving down, yeah. Edges where it went over, so from 639 to 700 horsepower. Wheel brands, we've got Michelin, so we've got white tires, two wheel drive. Four wheel drive, two and a half inches, or I'm not sure what that is, tracks two wheel drive, four wheel drive, same with the three inch tracks net, 36 inches, and then yeah, back to wide than that. Continentals are going to be pretty much exactly the same. Trailborg, yeah, pretty much the same. Rush lines, so you got wide. Two and four wheel drive, then the static tracks and that. And BKT whites, and then all those lovely tracks I like to see. Lighting packages, we've got standard, standard 2025, ultimate, standard 2025 with bottom cabin working lights. And then ultimate one with the cabin lights and back to standard. And then the pack wheel hubs design, so you've got design one, design two. So yeah, right, I couldn't see it the first time, but yeah, now I can see it's line 1, line 2, 3, and back to 1. GPS display, so yeah, we've got the normal GS, voice, or sorry, G5 or GS4600. Then you've got the G5 Plus. G5 new screen, so yeah, that appears into the cab. Lovely job there, and then yeah, GS new yeah, corner screen display, whatever. And back to the 4600, Starfire so is just your normal GPS, so integrated with the RTK and G5. And then yeah, just all different fitments and that, again, depends on what you want to go with. The radio, standard, new gen. And then yeah, so many more things to go through, so chopper that is at the rear, it's got design 1, 2, 3, and back to 1. Edition, so you've got the 75th Anniversary Edition, Century Edition, and yeah, mixture of both, or back to standard. Mirrors, standard, additional mirror. So where is that to? So, is that in the cab? I oh, know, it's on the outside. Ah, right, yes, yeah, so it's on the hopper net, or next to the hopper net, so. Not too bad. Warrant sign, so you've got design one. Design two, so if we have a look. Design three, design four, five, six, seven, eight, and back to one. And then the pipe, got design one, two, three, and back to one. So different names, so that depends on what header you can go with. And we've got lever or standard, so it's going to be the seat. Pillars, design one and two. License plate, and that is it. So into the cab we are, and this is the Vita. Yeah, that's the standard version I got, the lower spec, and this is the top end, so... Let's turn this on. Not overly loud, I like the little displays and that popping up, so L1, R1. See it? No, nothing there. There we go. So we'll unfold, turn on shawl. So yeah, there's no like you know, 25 different animations you can do. I can date it's a simple combine in that. So yeah, we'll go out into the field here. Our little soybean field. So yeah, let's go and oops. drop the header. Perfect. But yeah, it is very nicely done, very neat, and yeah, maybe we'll 
Yeah, maybe I try to think of what I was trying to say is, yeah, maybe not, maybe not the most, you know, highly customized configurable harvester out there, and at the end of the day, it may seem like a bit of a basic reskin or a basic remod of basically what we've already got. But yeah, I think the original X9, that's as part of the base game, can be a bit clunky at times, 550 grand. But also, yeah, there's no... Go for the US and EU specs, so yeah. Compared to the base game, you do get the better capacity, so... Base game, it is 16,200 liters, compared to these. Which can go up to 19,400, so... Yeah, again, may not be the largest capacities in that. Definitely larger than the base game ones, but... I know we can get modded ones of the X9s so that can go... 24 or 25,000 years or something like that, but at the end of the day, it does the job very well. Yes, yeah, so I'm using the driver header because, yeah, this makes sense in that. And we go across. So, unfold the harvester net. Yeah, so you don't have an option to take the tarp off or anything like that. I didn't think so. But yeah, we'll hook on to here. Oh, sorry, lift. Unfold the header. Yeah, so we'll see how this performs tonight. You know how it sounds. Because yeah, it is a different engine slide, isn't that? Different engine spec. And you want, to be fair, at the end of the day, as I said, may not be the most banging, you know, show stopping mod I mean, it does what it does it does perform well and it is a worthy adaptation of the base game so for one obviously spec wise in terms of capacity also it shows you the clear differences in the EU and the US spec in that things like the cabinet you know all the things you see as well things like additional screens and that controls and that panels all that other good stuff now it just shows you the differences. So, as a roll, this was a quality mod in that. So, we're going to part up over here. So, yeah, drop the header because that's not part of the pack, that's just what I'm using. And yeah, there we go, fold up. Have a little quick look around. At the end of the day, it's John Deere mod, so of course it's going to be well done. But anyways, I think that's going to be it for this, so that is the John Deere x series by Deans. Next. On to our final mod of the day, we got the Grapple Yarder. This is by Kenny456, it is 20.48 megabytes download, slot count is 17, goes down to 1, and oh boy, what a mod we've got, so... If you're very familiar with the Platinum expansion, you know we had things like the forestry yarders and that, so where you can like, transport your trees and logs and that via a yarder and that. But this grapple yarder is basically a sort of two in one, so not only is it a grapple yarder, potentially, as you can see how we've got sub already. So yeah, I'm just going to remove that. But yeah, not just that, kind of be used as a crane, so this could if logs as you can see here also it's got tension straps so you can things like pick up equipment and definitely containers of it so this is a very nice little mod here so what I'm going to do is back it up a sec first of all overall inspections not too bad there are some very good color configurations you can have so let's have a little look at that shall we so you'll find this under vehicles under forestry equipment or forestry machines go towards the end 240 grand as i mentioned 17 slots goes down to one weighs 66.4 tons top speed of six miles an hour 620 liters of fuel a variable cvt transmission and 340 horsepower so windows standard or tinted beacons no or yes that is on top of the cab and now for your color so you've got your basic color palette along with a yard of gray you're the white, you're the red, and then on to your basic color. So, nice hot pink. That's going to do that. 
A blue is going to change the actual main body. The arm, very, again, very self specific, so that changes the arm. Bit on the body and that, and the linkages for the cables and that. And then lastly, you've got your track, so let's go with a nice vibrant green. There we go, so yeah, overall, not too bad, not too shabby, so. So yeah, as you see, we did have a yard route. But as I mentioned, this can be used as a crane. And you can see, we've got the different camera angles you could potentially have. So, L1, right stick, left to right, does that. And then up and down, does that. So, it the boom in that. So, you can proper get yourself a custom eye. So, I think somewhere like that for now is good enough. Then, L1, R1, right stick, left to right, does the rotating of the crane. And then up and down, just does that with the grapple. So yes, put us back up to there a sec. And then R1, right stick, left to right, raises and there's that, so... Feet, yeah, get ourselves into position. Grab some logs. And if we want to be a bit more secure, press R1 and R3. Now that is tension strapped. There we go. See, so, yeah, we can like open it up like that, so no problems whatsoever. So yes, yeah, do that, and then so, yeah, simply raise up. And then what you can do is load it onto a trailer or move it to a container, that whatever you want to wish to use it. So yeah, overall, not too bad so far. This alone is an amazing feature, and I think it's like very user friendly as well. It is like. I'm not the best at logging, but I have no issues working with this, so what I'm going to do now is lower this. There we go. Oop. Undo the tension straps. Then, oh no, 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 no. Don't want to do that. Definitely don't want to do that. Okay, just get straight, please. There we go. Open the claw. And then move myself out of the way. So yeah, now we've got our logs here. Let's say, I don't know, I want to transport it to the store over there. And she has grab some of these logs here. Can these be lifted? No. I've got an idea, so may not work. So first of all, what I do is just straighten up some of these logs here. Doesn't matter if they're not perfectly aligned. Well, technically it does, but I can get away with it. So press L1 and X. Also, you may know it's got two control groups. That's because one is for the crane, and the other one is only enabled when you have the yarder. So now we can toggle to the rope base. So we're going to that in a sec. So yeah, obviously you can move the crane as you wish. And actually, I think I got this not set up correctly. So. What I'm gonna do is remove the yarder. I want to go behind these logs. There we go, and yeah, because still say yeah, I want to take that to the store, so set up yarder. And also you can still do your normal control, so if you go to control group two, that is the rope base, so R1, right stick, left to right, move us to the position of the yarder, like so. And then up and down. Does that, so you can bring it all the way in. And yeah, so before I go crazy with that, L1, R1, does that. So yeah, that is just basic green control still. But yeah, you can raise and lower, so R1, right stick, left to right, does that. And then yeah, let's say if you're perched up on the hillside and that, so. You want to raise it up? You can raise this up by a lot. Still going. <laughs> Still going. So yeah, infinite amount of distance you can travel. So yeah, let's bring that back down. And there we go, so yeah. Now, so I want to go to the store, please, so... There we go all the way to the store 
Ooh, okay, whoa. May have gone a bit too far there. But yeah, am I might at the store of this. Oh, I am way past the store now, so. Bring that back in a touch. It's alright, minor interruptions there side by Mother Nature, so. Got a set up, so now I've got the yarder set up for the store now. So if I tab correctly, so we'll see we've got our yard stick in there at store. Okay, it's not the most perfect, so if I bring this forward a bit and then down, so L1, right stick up, and then, sorry, L1, and then R1. I think that's about fair now, so, so yeah, that is pretty much as close as I'm going to get. Yeah, it can be quite finicky you know, getting this perfectly flat, but you can't go, can't be careful going down too low and hitting the ground, because it can slightly phase through and then potentially send that to go absolutely ballistic. But anyway, so now, there we go, let's go back to our crane. Now we can reposition our crane. And then I think it's R1. No, not that. Oh, definitely not that. L1, R1. I should do, sorry. There we go, it's R1 with a crane group. So yeah, I want to get myself positioned. Like so. Extend across. And then can I change the camera angle so Actually, no, yeah, I completely forgot. You can actually change the camera angle to show this. So now I can properly be precise with this. So actually, I've got an idea here. Let's say we want to. Oh, careful, careful. Oops, not careful to hit everything. Let's say, I don't know, I want to sell this log. So I'm sure there's going to be some kind of potential limit. I have not seen it of us yet, so there we go. Now going to the crane itself. And yeah, I may have done this a bit too. Alright, okay. Scrap that. So yeah, I won't do this grab those trees there, so frame rate can be a bit iffy now. I think that's more because of the test map itself. Rather than anything else, so here we go. Let's say, let's say, imagine this is a cell point over here where our object storage is. So there we go. Now change to the crane once more. So R1, right stick, up and down does that. And then yeah, so I want to extend this out. Ooh, okay, so 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 it down. There we go. Pivot. Sorry, let's try that again. So there we go. Close up. Just to be safe. Tension strap and raise up. And now I can bring these logs to pretty much anywhere I want. So yeah, may help if we do that. Clear the tree lines. And there we go, taking it to the store on that. Again, this could be a lorry and that, you know, potentially loading it up. So, for example, let's say this is the road over here and all that over there is forest. So you've cleared just enough to get your logs up. Bob's drunk hole, you are done. So I think there is a limit on how far you can go, depending on the height, I think it is. So... If I try that, then if I properly lower you, then no. Nope. So yeah, can go so far up. So I can't go right to the top. But yeah, there we go. Open our grapple, and there we go. That is our logs transported to the store. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not the best demonstration, but you can sort of get the idea of it. Where you know, you can pretty much. Places anywhere on the map. And now I want to know. So if I go back to here. 
Move the yardstick. Because now, how far can I go? So we are currently smack down south of the map. Now set up yarder and that, so I want to no wrong one. There we go. So yeah, raise this up. And then yeah, I want to take this across. So press L1 and down to go out. Can we go to the other end of the map? Is there like a limit on how far we can go? Ah, funny enough, there is a limit, so she moved the height in that. But yeah, so this is as far as I can go out, so five places down. So there we go. That is our place, so I want to see where we are. So we are currently at one eight so uh, from here we are on the bottom left, 1813. And I thought, let's take our little monobike here, because I want to see how far the range is. So, we were at 1813, correct? So, now we're at, see, at 1816. So, okay, maybe again from where I'm aligned, it's slightly different. So, 1815 to 187, oh, sorry, 1315 to 1317. So, How far is that? So, 15, 16... Sorry, from the back here now, yeah, it's 1817, so... That is 500 metres in length. That is actually quite incredible, so you can transport your logs half a kilometre. Or whatever it is in Queen's English, in the proper units of measurement. <laughs> no, no, I'm only joking, that. Or am I? But, anyway, so that is a awesome little mod, so... This has been the Grapple Yarder by Kenny456. And actually, yeah, just looked at the mod description. And yeah, maximum rope length 55 meters. <laughs> or 500 meters, sorry. So yeah, without how to do that test, I could have looked on the mod hub and. Uh, anyways, also mod bit kid that. Definitely recommend this, especially if you're doing lots of logging that. Imagine having to have like a series of these all chained change together that. So you can have one yard stick here. An offload here and then have one going on the note straight across that way. You can go absolute bonkers with this setup and that potentially. But anyway, so that is all the mods for the 26th of September because, yeah, this has been the day coming out by two days because, yeah, first day is came out and as I mentioned. I had game crash with the deco house, whatever it was. So yeah, I had to complete restart everything in that because I did not save a thing. Because I usually don't save things on my test maps because if I get a game crash, or if I save the game and leave after a mod review and come back in, especially if it involves like harvesting or plowing, I have to redo everything. Well, I don't really want to do that potentially, to be fair. So that's that. And then on Friday, it was a case of yeah. Mod review. I got most of this done on yeah the Thursday night, up to the after the PGR buildings I think, and yeah it got to about midnight. And I was like yep yeah, I need to go to bed because I got to get up in four hours for work. So I made a decision to go to bed, <coughs> and then yeah Friday, long day at work. Back was in fucking pain, absolute just yeah health wise that my back ain't the greatest at the moment pull my back the other week and that so it's been an excruciating amount of pain taking a lot of painkillers and that and yeah honestly friday yesterday and that i just had sort of same zonked out pretty much because i was in that much pain and that having like sort of like little ep not not epileptic fits but like a seizure but not for epilepsy and that so yeah pain receptors are overloading at the moment but anyway so that's that, so yeah, it's coming out, I'm doing this bit now, 6 o'clock on Saturday morning. I know we've also got four mod maps to look at, so we've got Arkansas of American, Wolfhagen, Terra Hatcher Agriculture, and the East of Ab oh, sorry, Ab Abend Friden. So yeah, some awesome bit of maps in that. Unfortunately, a lot of them fucking require have required mods. 
I'm not saying it's wrong, especially some of these required mods, they ain't the usual Dutch modding bullshit. It's like, for example, the Terror Halt Agriculture, a lot of mods by Mr. Hector and ICAS. Also, more modders than that, so no groups of them. And there's the Arkansas of America, so it basically is an Arkansas state in that. State of Arkansas, so. I'm looking forward to those. I'm going to spend today, Saturday, doing those. Also, I've got a let's play that I have recorded. I have need to edit, so potentially today you can maybe see six videos out today. So four mod maps, this mod review, and if I get around to it, my let's play in that. And I really want to get some videos done, like for FS25 and that, some related stuff and that. Again, with my work schedule, I can't do the fact sheet Fridays because it comes irrelevant by the time I get around to doing them. But yeah, I've got a couple of ideas in terms of videos about FS25, as well as with the whole PS5, PS5 Pro, PS5 Pro 30th Anniversary Edition and all that, so hopefully that's going to come out tomorrow if I get my ass in gear today. But anyways, as always, if you found these mod reviews helpful and informative in some way, shape or form, if so, smash that button, feel free to go down below. If you want to share with some, please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider. But for you to do, hope you have a nice day. But for now, it's me from our Evlog stream, and I'll see you all very soon.